What is up you guys? It is your girl Unique the Iconic. I am back here with another video for you all. Today I'm going to be teaching you all how to edit in Final Cut Pro. This video has been requested for a while now and I promise you all I have been working on it. I wanted to make sure I can get every single detail I could when it comes down to the basics of editing in Final Cut Pro. But if you want to know how I edit in Final Cut Pro, please stay tuned and watch the rest of this video. <laughs> All right, you guys, so um, majority of all of my YouTube videos that you've seen from like the past two years have all been edited with Final Cut Pro. Before I was using Final Cut Pro, I was using um, Movie Maker, but that was on my older computer before I had a Mac. But unfortunately, they stopped, um, they stopped, I think, I'm sorry, they don't, they no longer have Movie Maker on like the Windows anymore, so I kind of was like, but out so I had to work with whatever I could and I tried using um, Adobe's what is it uh, Premiere Pro I tried using Premiere Pro but it just was too complicated for me and I really just didn't like it so I just kind of was like no thankfully I was able to uh, definitely get Final Cut Pro thank you to a very great friend of mine's and ever since then it has really been my go-to I absolutely love everything about it all right, so you guys, we're going to go ahead and get into it. I want to screen record my computer so you can all see um, exactly everything that I do step by step when it comes to editing my videos. All right, you guys, so the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to click on new project. Typically, whenever you're opening Final Cut Pro and you have not been working on a project beforehand, it'll just automatically create a new um, library and name it as Untitled. But you'll just go ahead and just uh, click on new project and you just make sure all the settings are um, equivalent to the footage that you already went and recorded. Okay, so beforehand, I like to make sure that I put my view on proxy instead of the optimized slash original. I just feel like it allows me to be able to edit better. Um, when it comes to my videos and be able to edit faster it just allows the whole process to go by so much better um that's something that is optional it's personally up to you and how your processor is or um, just based off of how fast you want to get something done so i'm just going to import these videos that i found off of a stock website um just to show y'all just basically how i would edit this video to my liking now, when you first upload the videos and you're doing it the method as far as um, making everything proxy, what that does is basically just renders a sort of less quality picture while you're editing up until when you want to export the official um, video. Uh, but we'll get into that later on. Um, right now, I'm just trying to get all the files, all the video files first that I'm going to be using so that it's able to go ahead and just make sure everything is uh, done. So it will show up red for a while until it creates that proxy um, image in regards to when you're editing. So I went ahead and I just got straight into editing. I'm going to click on the first clip that I want to use for the beginning of the video and I'm going to press I, that is going to that stands for in when in Final Cut Pro such as like the beginning of the clip and then I'm going to press O. O is the um, end of the clip or what they refer to as out. This basically just goes ahead and lets a uh, Final Cut Pro know that this is the beginning and end of the clip that you want to insert. So you would just drag it down into the timeline so that you'll be able to go ahead and just get ready to start um, putting all the clips together. So I'm just showing you guys basically how everything looks um, just without any edits yet, just me clipping the footage. So um, now what we're going to do is I'm going to trim some of that video off that I just sat here and put into my timeline. Uh, let's just say that you were working on a project and you've already got majority of it done and you really just did not want to have to go back into that clip and have to search um, in, in order to create like that beginning and end clip. You can just easily click on the image and stop where you want that footage to end and go to the top and, uh, and blade it and just get rid of the rest of it. Or if you wanted to add more footage, you can just do what I did by moving the bar um, that you'll see 
uh, the parentheses type of shape and then it'll be allow you to make it um, less or more of that footage. So on the far right, on the lower right side, you'll see you, you have like these effects and transitions. I'm going to use some of the built-in um, transitions that Final Cut Pro already has. I typically love to use like the blurs and the zoom-ins and zoom-outs. I do have other transitions and effects that I've added to my Final Cut Pro, but that's for like another day. Like I said, you guys, if y'all did want a part two, you can definitely just let me know. Now, sometimes that message will pop up where it will say create transition or cancel. Honestly, it really does not hurt your video at all. You can go ahead and just say create transition. It really won't do much. It's only referring to like that frame rate and how both of the videos are set up. So I really didn't like that transition. So I'm just going to go and go in with the simple one. I typically like to be very clean and very um, straight to the point when it comes down to transitions. I just still wanted to just have some type of little effect. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, replace that image um, that I, the sorry, not image, the clip that I put in last. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the front. I kind of like the way that it looks, especially for the beginning of the video. So I'm just going to extend the clip out a little bit more and add that same transition, the simple one in, just to kind of give it that still clean look. But it just looks like so much better, you guys. So in order to get it to look a bit more dramatic for me, I'm going to go in where you see like this little half clock all the way um, in the middle of the screen where the actual video is. Those options allow you to slow down a video, um, speed it up, or just bring it back to normal if you didn't like it being sped up or um, being uh, slowed down. Just all of those options. It has different speed rates, different slow rates. So it definitely is a really great tool, especially for when you want to kind of make your videos a little bit more dramatic and have people actually capture that particular scene that you're working on. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some more clips to our timeline. So I'm just going to go take a few and I'm just going to drag them down. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all how to kind of like pan and zoom in on a particular clip. You will need to click on the little small square in the middle of the screen where it's um, next to that little clock. But well, two more, two more little shapes over. This allows you to be able to zoom in and uh, crop out certain things or just kind of transform that particular image. As you can see that in the video, it starts to move over and kind of zoom in into that particular area that I was working on. After you're done with that, you can just click back on the transform box or click on done. So now I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean when you want to zoom in on an image. Uh, this, of course, if you want to get closer to a particular um, scene in the video, then this would allow you to do that with transforming. And of course, I'm not going to use that clip. I'm just kind of showing you, got, you guys exactly how to do that. So now we're going to go ahead and try to add another transition onto the uh, clip between the two images just to kind of see exactly what we want to work with.
Now, you guys, whenever you're trying to zoom in on the actual timeline, because some clips may be smaller, all you'll need to do is just use two fingers in us on the keypad and just spread them out. That will allow you to in to make the timeline spread out more or to uh, make it go back, back smaller, back regular, whatever. So now we're going to go ahead and just add a title in the beginning of our video. I'm going to use one of the built-in um, titles. So I'm going to use probably just the regular custom one that's going to be in your build-in and build-out. So now on the far right hand side, kind of at the top, this will allow you to be able to change the text and type anything that you would like to, just so that you're able to go ahead and just kind of um, change the font and, and all of that on that side. Now I do have some fonts that I did install on my computer. Um, like I said, you guys, if y'all want a part two, I'll definitely put that in there to show y'all where I got uh, the, some of my fonts from. And the one that I'm using is not a built-in font. This is a font that I definitely did download. So I'm going to scroll down because I just want to change kind of some of the things about the text. Of course, face is the basic color of that text. So if you didn't want it to be white, you can change it to any color. And I want to outline it to make it pop out more. So I'm going to go ahead and just use sort of a bluish color to kind of go along with the entire um color scheme that the video is kind of given that island feel So I'm just playing around with the settings to kind of see exactly uh, how I want it to be. The blurring is basically to kind of blur out the letters a little bit, only, only for the outline. And then you have it to where you can kind of make it glow. And I want to make it glow as well. Like I said, of course, we want to give it like this sort of island feel with the text. So I'm going to definitely do that. So now we're just going to go ahead and make it a little bit larger. So that's where you would use the size. You would just scroll it um, aside to side to make it smaller or larger. And I want to put it, put this text a little bit in the middle. I do want you to be able to see it. So now that I went ahead and got the text out the way, I want to go ahead and add the image to our video. I typically, typically like to add images last or music last because it just allows um, my Final Cut Pro to flow a lot better in regards to editing versus having it all there at once. Um, so we're going to go ahead and resize that by using the transform button again. Please make sure that the item or video that you're trying to transform is highlighted so that you're, it makes sure make sure that you're being that you're using that you're doing the right file because you don't want to do that and it's a whole different story from there. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of just put it wherever we want. This is a PNG image. That's why it is showing up like that. I do recommend that you all try to get PNG images whenever you're trying to get something to kind of like go over a video like that. It's so much easier. So we're going to go ahead and add some effects um, to the video. Now the effects, like I said, is in the lower right hand side. It is the button that is next to the transition one. It's kind of like the box one, so you click on that one so you'll be able to add your transition. So we just added a black and white one to one of these scenes so you can all see. And then that transition is going to allow it to come in to be um, into color. So 
So I went ahead and added a little bit more of the um, of this first clip to the video just to kind of uh, give it a bit more show time I guess you could say in regards to that since the scenery that you get to see from it is just so small. <laughs> So this is the part where um, what you're able to do is you would press in and out. This would allow you to be able to go ahead and kind of get your thumbnail from a particular sequence from the video. But I typically like to just go ahead and use um, a screenshot on my Mac on my MacBook just to make it easier because image sequencing can be a lot of images off of one video. So I just find that part to be way easier by just going ahead and just uh, capturing the screen. So now in order to record a voiceover, you would just head up to the top and you click on window and then you would click on um, record voiceover. And basically it would just start a few uh, more seconds before your original spot was to allow you to be able to record over your um, video or whatever you may be working on at that time. Of course, we're not going to use a voiceover, so we're just going to go ahead and delete that. We don't really need it. So I'm going to go ahead and add some music to the video now. Um, this music is kind of like an island music, which you'll be able to see, of course, later on. <laughs> So now we're just going to drag that music all the way to the bottom underneath the video and everything so that we're able to go ahead and just add that to our video. Now we're going to um, select where the end of the video is and we're just going to trim the rest of that song off. Make sure it is highlighted yellow you guys. Click on the top you click blade and this will allow you to just kind of get rid of that extra um, music and stuff that you don't need. So to make the video a little bit longer, I did go ahead and just add another bit of the file, the last the last image, I'm sorry, video, not image, to it. This is about a minute and some change. I'm not sure. And then, of course, you just go ahead and extend out the rest of the music. So I add another transition in order to be able to go ahead and just kind of get everything together. Now we're going to go ahead and export our video now that we're done. You will go back to um, where it says view and make sure you click on optimize original because you need to do that in order to make sure the video is in its the original quality. And after that, you're good to go as far as exporting. Just make sure you click on I at the beginning and O at the end so you can get the full video. Now we're just going to go ahead and get everything, the rest of everything together as far as where we want our video to be at, where file, and we're going to name it and keep it going from there. Other than that, you guys, this is the final result and uh, thank you so much for watching. Other than that, you guys, that's kind of the basics when it comes down to editing in Final Cut Pro. I hope that I was able to be as helpful as I could to anyone who is learning to work with Final Cut Pro or who is trying to start a YouTube channel. I really do hope that this helps you out. 
if you would like a part two as to exactly where I get my transitions and my effects and my text from, definitely please comment below and I will make a part two. It'll be more of an advanced um, video for people who want to up their video game just a bit more. But other than that, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. And y'all stay safe out here during this quarantine and COVID-19 stuff, okay? Love y'all.